Hey, it's Gachi, and today on the Rockabilly Arts, we are working on my car. I'm so excited. Roll that intro footage. We are working on my car. It is, uh, uh, the date is whatever, and uh, a couple, <laughs> like, a couple weeks from now, I will be driving my 1972 Cadillac up to Sevierville, Tennessee from beautiful Loganville, Georgia. Technically Winder, because that's where the shop is. And for our big annual Big Southeast Hearst meet, where a bunch of, bunch of Hearst people get together, ambulance people get together, we party, we do the craziest swap meet you've ever seen. And I always try and get ahead of this, but it never works that way. I, I end up uh, last couple of weeks before the meet working on my car for two weekends straight. And you would think that a car that doesn't see that much road action uh, wouldn't need that much work. But if you know anything about hot rods, you know that is not the, the case. Um, I gotta admit, right now I kind of have this very Stacy David trucks thing going on. Um, as usual, this episode does not have any sponsors. However, I do want to give some love to my folks over at Cadillac High Performance. Uh, they are fantastic. They sent me, uh, I mean, obviously I bought them, but like smog pulley delete kit um, and new alternator brackets. I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. Uh, and let me let me explain real quick. The way that the smog pump and the alternator work in a 72 Cadillac, because the smog pump goes, or the it goes crank, smog pump, um, water pump. And, you know, so that powers the water pump and the smog pump, and you use the smog pump to create tension to, to do the water pump. And then there's a second pulley on the water pump that goes straight to the alternator, so there's only two things. Well, if you take the smog pump out, then you have no way to tension the belt between the um, water pump and the crank. So, uh, so what I did was I made a bracket. This ugly piece of crap, this was literally the first thing I ever tape welded. It is absolute garbage. It is a uh, hammered, yeah, it's bad. Um, this, this one was even worse and this was the first version of it. Um, so what I did was I took the, the smog pump off and then I moved the alternator back so it would line up on that same pulley as the smog pump. The problem then was that it would the back of the alternator was basically resting up against the head. You could basically fit a business card between the back of the alternator and the uh, the head, which creates a lot of heat. Um, plus, plus I have a bit of a severe stereo in that car. Uh, the, uh, the amp benched 1933 RMS watts. Um, so my little little uh, 100 amp little this is not a little uh, alternator. Little 100 amp alternator um, was just not doing the deal. So bought this 150, which according to PowerMaster, ah, makes 106 amps at idle, which is six more than the other one made at full spin. So yeah, this will let me put the um, alternator back in its original location. And because the alternator bracket is long since in the scrap pile, um, I had to buy a new alternator bracket. Also, some love out to the folks at Rock Auto. New brake lines. By the way, Rock Auto, mm, big fan. Um, lower ball joints, um, <laughs> uh, what is it, tie rod ends, yeah. So, a little bit of everything going on and if we have time, I'm going to install <laughs> this seat belt bolt, which came out a couple of years ago. Um, don't really need it because the passenger side, but it, I should probably put it back in. And uh, I've been using these for um, the ground strap to the, to the amp, so I may run a second ground wire to it. Uh, yeah, that's that's what the next two days are like. It's uh, kind of it's like 40 degrees outside and raining, but this shop, not being a cave like the chicken coop was, it's not that cold in here. It's actually nice. Uh, I mean, there's a, the sound of water, but otherwise it's lovely. So I'm gonna get started. There's a lot going on here, and uh, so this is, this is going to be interesting for sure. Uh, one, since we moved into the new shop, I really don't know where everything is yet. There's uh, just a ton of stuff in boxes and in storage still because we didn't really unpack everything. We were in a hurry to get moved. It, the shop is functional right now. Uh, it's just, there's stuff missing and including, but not limited to my box of fan belts. Um, I'm pretty sure I have the right belt I need somewhere in that box, but I can't find the box. And I will, I'm willing to look for it for about two minutes tops and then I will just run to the parts store. Now the nice thing about this shop is there are three parts stores within a mile of here and invariably one of them will have it. Order of operation. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Um, I have to take the fan shroud out, but the uh, the fan uh, shroud that actually goes around the fan is part of the core support, and that's not coming out. So I'll you know move the uh, right upper radiator hose and the fan shroud, take the fan off, take the water pump um, fan or take the fan uh, pulley off, 
uh, which in order to get to the bolts on the front, I have to remove the fan truck. And then I will take all the bolts out of the uh, lower crank pulley, put the new pulley on, put the new timing marker on, and hopefully then mount the alternator. All of this will probably take a while. I'm not gonna guess as to how long it'll be, but um, I'm probably not gonna film it because if I just get started, maybe I can just get through it. And uh, then I'll show you the, the after. So hopefully it's good. Hopefully, you know, I don't cuss a lot because that's a pain to edit. Um, I've also learned to quit yelling at my car, you know, because my, my truck, my, my truck that blew up last year, um, it had kind of developed the nickname of start you piece of crap, or I hate you and everything about you, blah, 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 and I cussed the guy who designed it and the guy who designed the transmission, you know, cross member, uh, but this, this car means a lot to me, so I've not, I've, I've decided to quit yelling at her when I'm mad. Let's get started. Much has changed <laughs> since that very quick you know, two seconds ago, I was like, under the car, nice and clean, got my beanie on, and now I'm disgusting. Um, got the, so, new pulleys are on, uh, bracket is on, it is lovely. I went ahead and put on the uh, uh, the blocker plate for the fuel pump. The, the mechanical pump was still on there, even though I've had the electric pump on there for a few years. I figured it was a backup, just in case something went wrong with the electrical, uh, I always had a fuel pump with me. Uh, it's the first time my car has been on the lift. And I know I've been like super excited about getting on the lift and whatnot, but that that's terrifying, dude. That is absolutely horrifying the first time you put it up on the lift because it's huge. I mean, you can't see it, but it's six inches from the toolboxes against the wall. And I'm only off the floor like two feet and everything's groaning and flexing. It's like, Jesus, that's not cool. Um, got the front end, front left or right front wheel taken off and got the, uh, the brakes off and the <laughs> springs. And, if you've never seen the spring on a commercial chassis Cadillac, this, this is something. Now, imagine for a second having to take the load off of this spring while it's bouncing up and down on a lift. Uh, horrifying, just, just horrifying. I, I would start drinking, but I have to drive. So I'll be back in a few. I, I've got the lower control arm off. I'm about to press the bushing out. Apparently they're welded on. Uh, so I'm gonna do the lower ball joint. I, I might video that, but Actually, I might not. I might wait till I do the other side because I still have to figure out how it goes together. But... <laughs> it's funny how that works. I, uh, I said, hey, Joel, I'm about to film. He's like, okay. Whips out the grinder. Thank you. <laughs> Love you too, Joel. All right, so uh, yesterday I uh, started on the, the front end and <clears throat> I'm glad I didn't film the process because I really would hate to have to edit an hour of me trying to put a dust boot on a lower ball joint, but I, I have a technique now that should help. Um, this is a huge pain in the butt and um, yeah, for many reasons, one of which is it's just old and nasty. Yeah, giant freaking rotors um, relative to the year, right? But they're, they're just, they're like an inch and a half thick. So what I've got to do is I've got to take the brakes off. I'm replacing this brake line because uh, they're the original brake lines and they're, you know, the rubber gets a little manky after a while. Um, doing the lower uh, tie rod and lower ball joint. Let us discuss something real fast, very important. All right, I'm taking this brake line off. This brake line has been on here since 1972 and I'm replacing it with a new one. Uh, now. Those are brass uh, fittings, and they're, they're kind of they're tapered. Um, if you go to take one of those off, line wrench. See a little hole, little cut in it, so you get bite on most of the sides of it. Do that because if you round that off, you have to cut it off, and then you have to make a new one, and it requires a double flare tool, and that sucks. Uh, yeah, line wrench, big fan. Never seen a, uh, a ball joint completely eat it. This is a completely destroyed lower ball joint. Um, See the, the, <laughs> the dust cover blown out and it shouldn't move this easy. You know, they're supposed to move with, you know, a fair bit, but not like this. Um, so, and you shouldn't be able to spin it. Uh, this thing was a, a real pain to get out. And it's disgusting. So I'm not gonna press this one out, uh, press the other one in, use my new fancy way to put the cover on and keep going. Ah, we were saying that that ball joint was completely uh, no good. Watch this. So. A ball joint should not do that. It should not twist, and it certainly should not pull apart. Ugh. This is the new one, in all of its pristine glory and beauty. So here's what we're gonna do. 
This is what we're gonna do here. Once you take this, we're gonna press it through that and then uh, put the uh, the dust cover on it. So put a little bit of the old grease on here. It doesn't really matter too much, but I'll tell you also, one of the uh, better investments in the shop, the press. I didn't really think it was gonna be all that useful at first. And then we started using it and I was like, wow, that is mighty useful. Well, first thing I'm gonna do is kind of seed it a little bit. Got something to grab onto. Preston Berry. Now, figured out another trick. Okay, so yesterday, I uh, this took like half an hour for me to do because I couldn't figure out how to get, um, where'd the dust cover go? This dust cover onto this. You think, oh, it just kind of slips on, except for this is a hard rig. It does not flex, it does not move. There's nothing you can do about this that will make it any easier. So, as we do, a little bit of grease. And uh, according to ye old manual, you're supposed to put a giant socket on it, but I don't have a socket that's like two and a half inches. But what I do have is the spring off of a dirt bike. How I ended up with this is the perfect tool. It's beyond me. While I'm over here working on Morticia, Jeff and Casey are, are currently working on Casey's new car. And uh, hi Casey. And uh, man, it must be awesome to be able to fit in the trunk of your own car. What do you think, Gabe? Hey, I had to get a few bolts that were uh, in a hard place to get. This made it easier and it's comfy. That's all I gotta say. It looks comfy. It is, I'm sitting on the tire, the spare tire right now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, back to you, Gucci. <sighs> well, since uh, since I started this video, much has changed. Uh, it's been a um, um, week and a half or so. Uh, got the front end put back together. That was a huge, colossal pain. Uh, and I'm glad I didn't film all of it because yeah, it was really dangerous and something would have gone wrong in that whole I'm glad I didn't have a cell phone camera when I was a kid because I would have gotten seriously injured uh, kind of way but everything's back together drove up to the alignment shop it's the first time in as long as I can remember that the alignment is right which is weird seeing caster camber proper uh, is pretty nice it's pretty nice there's still some slop in the in the steering box and I can't get to it because the adjustment screw is right below one of the header tubes and I, I just literally can't get to it so today uh, on the agenda, I'm going to build a little bracket that holds the snout of the starter um, to keep it from kicking down because you know, giant motor with a lot of timing. Uh, I'm going to fix a tail light, see if I can figure out what's wrong with the gas gauge, and then go take her out for a spin and see how she feels. Uh, the new alternator is so, oh, look at this, look at this thing. The, let me see if you can see the, the actual like alternator. All right, let's see if we can see the, the new alternator and all the new pulleys. They're so fancy. Look at that thing. So beautiful. So choice. So choice. If you have the means, I highly recommend picking one up. So pretty. Um, yeah. We are about to start building stuff. Yes, time for fabrication, which is my favorite. It's fabrication time. Fabrication time! There's a bolt that goes on the back of the starter. So when the starter kicks over, there's just two bolts that go on that hold it to the uh, the block. But then there's a little strap that goes between the block and then the end of the starter. And I didn't know that that part existed. Apparently I took it off sometime in the 90s, I think. And I've now, here, let's see if you can pan down, broke this starter and this starter in the course of a year. Because, you know, it happens. This one was really good though, because this one I bought, in uh, Sevierville, Tennessee last year. Uh, swapped it out in a parking lot of a, like a, I don't know, a steakhouse or something like that. And it broke. I mean, like when you, it broke, broke. See that giant cavernous crack in it? It broke. So now we're going to make a little strap that goes from basically that bolt to the back of the block. And that'll be a thing. Fabrication time! All right, what I was trying to do is I need to make a little bracket that uh, goes from the back of the starter to the block, but there's it comes off at a slight angle and then twists so it sits flat against the block. What I ideally need is some, some one inch by like 16th or maybe even eight, but what I have is this 
two and a half inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'll cut this down to a, you know, basically just a little strip, cut it, and then start manipulating that, and then I'll take it over and beat the crap out of it with the vise, and should work, in theory. Who knows? After a little bit of trial and error, we have now made a bracket. So this is the, the bolt hole that goes to the uh, block, and this one goes to the back of the starter to, to keep the snout up so you don't end up with a San Andreas crack down, uh, down the starter. So I'm gonna lob off this little bit right here, go put it in the car, and then figure out the next thing I need to fix. Ah, uh, done, mostly. Uh, I didn't get a chance to get to try and figure out what's wrong with the gas cage, and the bottom tail light isn't working for some reason. Uh, we tried swapping bulbs. There's something wrong with the connection, and I don't feel like taking it apart. I uh, probably should, but I might in a couple of days. Um, but yeah, like did the suspension, got an alignment, fixed the starter, put the new alternator on, all that. So all this is awesome because, like on video, it looks like it took you know 10 minutes tops, but really we're talking eight, 10 hours, something like that. And yeah, well, that's it. Uh, Thursday, I am driving to uh, Sevierville, Tennessee to go hang out with all my favorite Hearst people. Big fan. And I'm gonna have a full video about that. Uh, that's gonna be an adventure. That will probably be a pretty long video because there's a lot to cover. Uh, but until we meet again, remember to drive fast, stay chances, and safety third. Peace.